Okay, welcome to the webinar, Bitrix 24 HR Toolkit. So who are we? I'm Damian Edwards, Commercial Manager of Bitrix 24 Partners Interface. Uh, we are located in Sheffield in, in the UK and we have offices in New York and Dubai and we manage all pre-sales support, including uh, providing a demo and explaining the different additions that are available, a full implementation service, including customization and training. If you choose a self-hosted solution, then we can provide a hosting in our own data center we, or we can set up on your own host and we provide a telephone support service for Bitrix users. With me, I have our support manager, uh, Andy Naylor. Hi there, so if you do have any questions throughout this webinar, just put them in the box provided and we can have a Q&A session at the end of each section. Okay, so what is Bitrix 24? A suite of uh, well in excess of 35 tools now for managing your business. Um, more than 4 million organizations currently use Bitrix24 um, available as a cloud subscription service. Basic package starting from free, first commercial package $24 a month and a self-hosted solution um, allowing you to host in-house or in your own data center. Uh, base package for that 12 user licenses, just under $1,500 and that goes up to, depending on numbers of users, I think the top package is actually an unlimited user package on the self-hosted solution. So I use Bitrix24 for your HR needs, uh, all the tools that you need for uh, finding and managing employees, uh, storing documents, uh, HR documents. Uh, a number of different built-in processes, uh, for example, absence, absence management and purchase requests, and the ability to create custom processes such as onboarding new starters. We're going to look at some of those processes today. So let's start with some of the basic tools, look at how you can find people and populate users' profiles, how you can manage time. Uh, in the system where you can store documents, engage with employees, and how um, how you can use self-service forms. Okay, if we start with managing time, um, we can we can use the clock in. You can see it's flashing up here. We're gonna I'm gonna show you how to clock in on a mobile in a minute, but we can use this up here to clock in and clock out. Uh, it flashes red. It's not too visible on this red on this red background, but it's quite clear that um, we need to clock in or do something. Um, so we have um, we can we can clock in up there. We can view uh, users' time on time and reports dashboard. So uh, we're on a demo site here, so most of this is not well populated. You'll see in your instance, every one of these days will be populated, or every one of these boxes will be populated by days across the top and users down the left-hand side. You'll see, uh, if you want to manage users' time in the system, you'll see exactly when they clocked in, uh, at what time at the end of the day they clocked out, total number of hours, and um, you can report on that on a, on a daily, a weekly, monthly basis. Uh, we'll have a look at a little bit about clocking in and managing time in a, in, a, in a little bit. Second thing I want to look at is finding users inside the system. So uh, we have a universal search, which is uh, available on every page of Bitrix, allows me to, um, as soon as I start typing, it gives me some suggestions. You can see I've found three users up here. So first way of finding somebody in the system is using that. Um, of course, when we log into their profile page, the profile page is available to every user in the system. So this is public information that you share with people within your organization. Can customize on self-hosted some of the fields that you view down here. Um, but the standard fields would be things like email and contact 
telephone numbers. Second way of finding people in the system is the company structure. So probably one of the first things you would do with Bitrix is, is actually setting up your company structure. Um, this allows you to easily find people by um, browsing through departments, but also it allows you to run um, things like approval processes. So a good example is, a, is an absence request. We're gonna look at that in a, little, in a little bit, but should anyone in this team here submit a request for leave, then their, their direct manager, who you can see here, is gonna be the person that approves, approves that. So you can use it for approvals. You can use this absence chart also for permissions. Of course, that's important to set up permissions in the right way so uh, the right people see the right information inside the system. I think maybe if, if we just have a, a very quick look, Andy, at how you add a custom field in here. Do we do it in the edit mode up here? Yeah, so with the self-hosted version of Bitrix, as Damien mentioned, we can add new fields. So I'm not gonna go too much into detail in it, but we will go into the control panel and create the custom field within there. And then for those of you that are fairly new to the self-hosted, what we can do, as Damien mentioned, is go into edit mode. And then we can just select the component itself. And in our properties, we can view all the available fields in here. So it's quite straightforward to add fields. And I think it does just give you that flexibility of having uh, unique custom fields. We've got clients that store uh, contracts on profiles. Uh, we have people that uh, store uh, particular private HR documents. Yeah. They don't have to be stored on this profile page. Yeah, ne yeah. next I'll show you where you can actually store documents. Like Andy says, you can create a custom field here if you have a self-hosted version and, and link it to documents. Um, but every user does have their own drive space as well. So you'll see a menu on the left-hand side called Drive. Uh, just change the view of this. Uh, zoom that out a little bit. So in my drive space, I see um, it links to all the work groups that, or the folders within the work groups that I belong to. So you can see these ones that uh, have the indicate, the, the the share uh, logo indication on on the folders. But you also have your own space to be able to store uh, HR documents, contracts, and appraisal documents. And it's possible to create the correct permissions so that you can see those. Maybe your line manager can see those, and maybe the HR team as well. Uh, but they can be restricted for other other people. Everything's searchable um, it, up here. So if we type any, start to type any word in up here. Then it does um, it does allow us to search for. Let's press return. Does allow us to search for. Um, <clears throat> Does allow us to search. Okay, we find we've not got any documents under technology, but uh, it does allow us to search the title of documents, and it also allows us to search um, the content, the content of documents as well. So there you go, you can see a contract. Um, so you've got a personal drive space, and you can create permissions on that drive space. Um, final thing, really, um, the main feature you need to know about in terms of HR is the option, the ability to be able to engage better with your employees than you can on things like email. So we can show appreciation for people. So if we want to type a congratulations message in there, we can share this with all employees, but we can link this to one particular person in the business. Choose a badge and then we can share that with the whole, um, the whole company. Another way of sharing information that you might want to share with the whole business is to make an announcement. So let's say we've got a new starter. I actually want to share a file. Let's see if we can attach an image that star that person. And there we go. So we can post again. We're going to post this to all employees. So. Um, we're going to post this to all employees. Let's just let's just click into um, 
this other user. So I've I'm logged in as a as a second user up here. Just refresh their page. Then you'll see what it looks like to this user. They see this. They see this post. We can we can expand that. They also see on announcements um, a post-it note at the top here, and we've got I've got a button here. So in order for this to this to clear itself, I do need to mark that as red, or I can do it up there, and then my my announcements clears itself. Um, the thing you might let's just let's just switch back to the user. The thing you might want to have a look at if you're evaluating Bitrix is the pulse. If we click into this on the top right hand corner. This will give us um, an overview of which areas of the system people in your business are using the most. So we can see again it's a demo site, so we've not got a lot of users in here, but you can see uh, you'll get an indication down here which areas are the most popular. Uh, we can expand this from a single day to a month to a year, and uh, it's unable to actually search by individuals or the whole company. So it might be that actually mobile app might not be too popular. You can you can create a post using this link to promote use of the mobile app in your business. Okay. Let's see if we've got any questions. Can an employee be in more than one department? Um, they can. So, um, yeah, uh, the reason why you might want to do that is we mentioned using the company structure to set permissions, particularly in the CRM. It might be that actually you want, uh, or, 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 or if you're approving leave, it might be that you want to, you want to actually approve leave for two teams or two departments. So you could be, you could be positioned in in two departments at the same time, that would be possible. Um, we get asked this a lot, how you disable time tracker. Um, so that is in time and reports. We go into your work time page. And if you're an admin, you'll have access to this settings button here. And if I click on settings, then I can I can enable or disable by department or by individual user. So it's currently off. Let's, it's off for that department. Let's have a look. It's on for the, uh, we logged in as John Smith. It's on for John Smith. Uh, it's off for his department as a whole. You can see that um, we have some times here. So the latest clock in time is 8 a.m. Uh, earliest clock out time is 8 p.m. So, um, and there's some allowance here to allow this user to clock clock in a little bit later and clock out a little bit earlier, up to 15 minutes per per day. But should should this person not put in their full, in this case, 12 hours, then you will get, a, as a manager of that, uh, as a department head, you will get a notification to say that they've not actually spent full of the right amount of time inside the system. Um, can I use the clock in on a mobile app? They can. Actually, we're going to have a look at that in a couple of minutes. Okay, so let's have a look at some um, examples. We're going to have a look at absence request. We will have a look at um, uh, new starter onboarding. So an absence request is a standard process built into Bitrix. It's shipped with the product. Every edition of the product ha has absence request. Um, new starter is a custom process that we've We've built a uh, sort of process that you can build yourself. And then we'll just have a look at the mobile and track, tracking time on the mobile. Let's go back to the home page. And we'll find absence. You'll find your um, workflows uh, under the more tab. If I click into workflows. You'll you'll see in a in a, a standard version of Bitrix, I think these ones expenses report purchase request leave leave appro approval. Uh, I think some of these like new project and new starter these are custom processes that we've built. Let's use leave approval. Um, so I can just before you start on this, I think one of the important things is you do need to be on a paid version of Bitrix to get access to these workflows. Right. Uh, they're not available on the free version. Okay, so I think paid versions start from the plus account, which I think is $24 a month. So it's not, you don't need to be on one of the top 
pro professional accounts or anything to get access to these. Um, but I can submit my date range in here. I can submit the type of leave. You can actually customize this form, I think. So if you wanted to um, them to submit some more supporting evidence, maybe even attach a file or something like that, then you can have additional fields in here. Let's submit that. And we are going to go over to our other user, Mark Hope, and you can see that he's received a, a notification in his activity stream. It gives me details about the request. I've got the option to approve or deny that here. Let's just have a look in the workflows as well in the top left-hand corner. In fact, you see this in a few different places. So you see it in the activity stream. You see it in the workflows here. There's currently 13 outstanding. You see it in your workflows widget on the right-hand side as well. So we click into the pending on that link on the right-hand side. I think this is the one we just submitted on the 11th. So again, uh, I can see who the user is. This is myself because this is the person that um, the process currently sits with and I can approve or deny from this page. Let's approve that. When we approve, when we approve or deny these, let's take some of these other ones out. They drop out of this. Uh, they drop out of this list view on this page. And so as a manager, you're going to receive a number of different approvals on your assignments page that you need to work through. <coughs> Can actually can actually filter these so it might be that you want to filter them if you're dealing with a big team by holiday requests uh, got other things like uh, help desk tickets and things like that in here as well so that's approved if we go back then we can see that um, give it a refresh we can see that the, the, the requested leave has been oh this is the rejected ones we had a number of different ones that we rejected on that page you can see that they've and this is the one that we actually approved down here so i get a notification say it's been approved um one thing you might want to consider if i just click into the profile here um we can see um number of days remaining here we can see uh pending uh leave on the right hand side this is a plugin that we've developed to interface um, so if you want to manage uh, uh, holidays in a little bit more detail, including giving users an entitlement, an annual entitlement, you can do that with a plugin that we've developed. Um, you do need to be on the self-hosted, though, I think, for that plugin. So a passion to Andy, and we just have a quick look at the business process at the back of that. Uh, we're not going to go into it in detail, but so you can see how, how uh, customizable it is. Yeah, again, if you go into the workflows, workflows and activity stream, if you are on the minimum package of a plus, then you'll see the different types of HR processes that are available. So business trip purchase request, leave approval, what we've just been on, general requests and expense reports. So if you're clicking back into workflows and let's have a look at the approval. So this is a standard, as Damien said, a standard uh, workflow in Bitrix. You can see, as an administrator, you can see all the requests that have come in and whether they've been approved or not here. And then click on Customize Fields. These are the available fields that you have in the form. And again, as Damien mentioned, you could add a custom field here maybe to upload a file or, uh, yeah, I mean, you can, you can uh, choose the different types of leave. You can edit them there. So this is a simple process of adding the fields. And then finally, if we click into the configure workflows section, then we can actually see the process that runs behind it here. So once the form gets submitted, we start at the start point, and then we go through a series of different uh, actions. One of the main ones here is the uh, leave approval block. So we can click into this and we can specify the person who is uh, wanting to approve this leave. So we've got Mark Hope. And then once it's approved, we set the status to approved. Rejected, we set the status to rejected. And then finally, we have a check on that. So we can see if it has been or if it hasn't. We send a notification if it hasn't. If it has, again, we send a notification to the employee 
and then put it onto the absence chart. Yeah, and all these notifications that you see here, you can customize the content of these easily. So this simply just shows the, the fields. But if you want to have a, 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 a change the description of the text inside there, you can do that yourself. Okay, let's go look, look at a uh, custom process that we have in the system. It might be quite a useful one for a lot of businesses. New starter onboarding. Um, so in this case, we've got, um, we presented with another form. And so we've got a new person starting in the business. We can um, select that person in here. We're going to use this one here. Give them a give them a job job title. Select their start date. Um, select the role as well or department that they're going to be working in. We're going to select manager from this this list of two. We'll show you the process and you can see why that will trigger some different actions in the system. Uh, might be that we want to select. Uh, somebody to support this person and we can select in the field we've got here a leave attach some files and contracts as well in this form so from from one form we can add quite a lot of information about this this user and this will go and trigger a process which will um, do do various things that we need to do to onboard this this new starter I think if we just switch into the into the other user, Mark Hope. I think the first thing that we see actually is this request. So you have a new buddy. Hi, Mark. You have a new buddy. Swing by their office later today. And Mark's got the option now to do that. You know, when when he's got time, and he can confirm that that's been done by clicking in the start here. Uh, can actually accept, refuse, or can even actually delegate this on to a to another colleague. So we're going to say that that's been done. Let's just let's just switch back. I'm not going to go through the whole process because there are a few different things happening here. Let's just just click into the process itself. It might be easier just to talk you through what actually happens. Oops. Uh, workflow directory. Workflows. So it's the same um, business process tool that we looked at for the absence chart. Um, does a few different things in this case. So I'll just talk you through this. So the first, the first thing it does is actually upload the contract that if you if we'd attached a contract in the process, it would have uploaded that to the to the correct drive. You can email out a copy of that to this new starter as well. There's then a condition. So we had a selection where we selected either manager or admin. The, the, the tasks that happen below there, they look similar. But actually, they're going to be diff have different content. So we selected manager. We'll have sent out a welcome message to this new starter. We looked at this little um, approval loop here. Um, so we requested that somebody buddy up with this person, and we approved that. So it went down this route here and uh, sent a notification of, um, of that. And then a little bit further on, we've got an additional um, request here. So in this case, it's to book an indu uh, induction for this person. There's a pause, and then there's a, a, a further request for somebody to carry out a review meeting. So you can you can um, use something like that. You can, you can uh, add additional features to this using any of the action blocks on the right-hand side. So should we need to create a... Uh, a meeting or calendar event, you can do that. Should you want to use tasks and create a series of tasks, you know, you can drag these items in from the right hand side. So this sort of process should be fairly simple for you to build. Um, if you want, if you want this one, and we can we can export this and provide you with this process. But if you want help building something like this, then contact a partner; they can they can help you. Um, the reason why you would use a process really in this instance for onboarding new people is that make sure that everything that you need to do over the first few weeks of this person starting in the business, make sure that everything you need to do happens. Um, so it can it can trigger a number of different actions that you would need to do you know, need to do manually. Okay, let's have a look at. Um, so there's a couple of different processes, a standard one and a custom one. 
let's have a look at um, what we can do on the mobile. So we um, we looked at briefly at the beginning how you can use the clock clocking feature within um, the browser version. You can actually do this also on a mobile. So we have quite a lot of businesses or you, pe businesses that have their users clock in our mobiles. Um, it allows them to clock in when they arrive on site, whether that's in the main uh, your own office or whether you arrive on a client site. So we can just refresh, we just refresh that page. Okay, I might have I might not have permissions to clock in on this, unfortunately, but um, you can you can, as I say, clock in on on a mobile or you can clock in alternatively in, in a browser. So I can't show you that show you that today. Okay, let's see if we've got any questions. Look, can absence requests go to uh, multiple users? Uh, yes, yeah, certainly. So the one that actually comes with Bitrix as standard, it will get sent to a uh, supervisor, uh, and then once the supervisor approves it, then it will get forwarded on to a HR manager, and again, they will need to approve it on there. So that's that is, yeah, you can tailor it towards your uh, needs and we always say that with the standard processes that come with Bitrix uh, export them first so you have a backup copy and then have a play around with some of the processes get used to the business process editor tool uh, and you can chop and change where what you might want in that particular process mm -hmm. and what process processes are supplied as standard um, so I think I think it's about I think it's about four processes. So I think absence request, purchase request, um, as a general request. Um, I think probably three three or four sort of standard processes. But I think generally you would, you know, the the, the, the self service forms can be used for admin for for HR, but also for a lot of sort of admin requests. That approval page that we showed you gets used for. Um, particularly purchase requests, but any other requests where maybe you need to approve something in an administrative way, such as maybe someone's produced a quote, you need to approve that before it's sent to a client or um, any other sort of approvals that you need to do in, inside the business. So um, it's quite simple. We looked at, um, we, we quickly looked at how to create, I think the fields in a form and where, where you find the business processes. It should be fairly straightforward to say, to create those. Um, to create those yourself. So in summary, um, you uh, can easily find um, colleagues within the system using either a profile, a search within the, at the top universal search or, or by browsing through the company structure. It's possible to manage um, time. We didn't look at tasks, but we looked at how you can you can clock in and out in the browser, and we tried on the mobile as well. You can actually manage time on individual tasks as well. So not only manage the time uh, uh, a user starts and ends their working day, but also what time they which tasks they spent their time on during that day. There are personal drives. Um, within the system, and you can manage permissions on that course. Um, can engage employees better than you can on just simple email communication with uh, showing appreciation and announcements. Um, access permissions, of course, custom access permissions, and some standard self service forms and ability to create custom forms in the system as well. So that's it, we have a, a webinar each week. Uh, we look at CRM in detail, we look at project management, we look at um, self-hosted product, which is um, some more advanced features. Uh, we also look at business processes, how you can use Bitrix to improve uh, processes of your company. 
Uh, we look at also new features like sites within Bittrex and telephony as well. So go to interface.com slash webinars to register or bitrix24.com. You can register on there as well. And uh, if you go to youtube.com slash interface as well, you can watch uh, previous webinars on there. Okay, thanks for your time. Thank you.